number one stand-up paddle athletes of 2012, an elite cyclist and mountain biker, also a successful businesswoman and keen philanthropist. Hailing from the natural adventure playground of Wanaka, please welcome to the cafe and the Harvey Normal Lounge, Annabelle Anderson. Yes! Thank you very much. Now, Annabelle, uh, that's quite an achievement um, to be the number one sup border. What do we call you? Sup border, stand-up paddle athlete. I mean, what do you want to be called? You can call it whatever you would like. It's stand up, it's stand up paddling, it's stand up paddle boarding. It's still probably going through a minor identity crisis, um, but <laughs> call it what you wish. As long as you're out there doing it, that's really all that matters. But you've been number one for quite a few years now. I mean, that's quite an achievement. How did that come about? It's really hard to get to the top. It's insanely difficult to consistently stay there. That's been probably the biggest challenge is year after year is how do you maintain that motivation to go out and you know not only challenge yourself but to rise above and to meet the challenges of others. Where did the biggest com um, competitors come from for you? It's actually all over the world so there's some absolute talent out of the United States, out of Europe believe it or not um, and a lot here locally both in New Zealand and across the Tasman out of Australia. Yeah, there's some hotbeds all over. So this is your seventh consecutive win. What does it actually entail? Do they time you on a course? Do they time how long you can stand up for? How does, how does it work? Well hopefully you remain standing because as soon as you're in the water that's really slow. Right. <laughs> yeah, you don't go fast that it's way. It's called stand up for a reason. Yeah, you must have that. Paddle boarding or lying down paddle Don't worry sometimes that can be like more than a challenge than you actually realise. Um, but generally it's as from a start to a finish and the first across the line. Um, but obviously there's many different forms of it that we compete across and we just had uh, the seventh New Zealand uh, Nationals of stand-up paddling and it's a long course distance race which is 18 kilometres and then racing in and out of the surf. Wow. So, so, so yeah. you have to actually get out of the water and, and carry your board up the beach as well? You don't have to, but there is plenty of occasions where it looks I, I like to. It does look good. How many boards do you have? Too many to count. <laughs> Are they all in New Zealand or stashed around the world? Uh, stashed around the world. I bring, I bring <laughs> special ones home. You know, right. ones ones that have got you know a bit of you know a uh, bit of nostalgic. They've done well, or you know things that I think that I need to come. Actually, I, in all honesty, I actually bring a huge amount of gear back to New Zealand to test in the off season and put it pit it against the environment, against Mother Nature and find out exactly where and it does and doesn't work and that's a bit of intel to take forward to the international oh, season. Obviously the, the equipment that you use must be something that's pretty special. Pick that that um, that up, Mike, the um, paddle. That, the paddle? Yeah, pick it up, not the whole board, just right. feel that. Just feel, the paddle. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. It is the most lightest thing I've ever felt in my life. Does that, that feel beautifully balanced. It feels awesome. It actually does feel great and uh, there's a reason why I've never changed paddles. I, you know, it's the same essentially the same paddle that I first started battling with, you know, about eight years ago, and there's been no good reason to change, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Well, how did you get into this? Because, I mean, it's a sport that's been growing in popularity. Mm. For you to be the champion seven times in a row means you were onto it before everybody else. Did you stumble into it, or did I somebody make you do it? I literally did stumble into it, and I was living in London at the time, and it was one of those things that when you are in a different country and opportunities present themselves, you don't have that fear of failure of when you're in New Zealand, and I took a chance trip to Germany on an easy jet flight and that weekend we turned, rocked up to a World Cup with you know, the best girls in the world and came away with 2,000 euros in my pocket. And I was like, great, where are we going next week? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. And literally it was like that was not only a catalyst but uh, I was coming to the end of my work visa in the UK and it was a place, a, a circumstance of right place, right time and I used it to travel. The and thing, now you're beating boys yeah, too, aren't you? Yeah, you're beating the boys yeah. as well. Uh, there is a few guys, more than a few, that have gone down and have been checked. Ooh. Excellent. You know what I like about this so much yeah. is, is the fact that it's it is like it's such a fun thing to do. We've got three yeah. of them, um, and I'm the I'm the champion of Man of War Bay at the bottom of oh, there Waikiki, we go. by the way. A self-titled champion, by the Love way. It. Yeah, haven't actually Love had a competition, it. but I mean we've got three of them. Even the ten-year-old can do it. It's yeah. it's it's kids, once he's up, he's up. Kids absolutely seem to gravitate to it, and. I see it and you know kids will have like a number of toys lined up across the beach and for some reason they end up on this and I'm like how did that happen but you know they love to play and they make it their own and kids just have this natural ability to to pick it up and 
not complicate it the way that we, we do. as adults tend <laughs> to complicate a lot of things when we get older. <laughs> Well, obviously it's fun, very competitive, and this is, you're making a career out of this. This is your full-time gig, really, is yeah, it? Yeah, it has to, it turned into a full-time gig, and it has been for, you know, a good seven years. And so it's a case of, for me, trying to keep finding new ways to keep that motivation going and, you know, to keep trying to rise to all new levels of performance and... Yeah, it's... Keep going. I'd I say. will. Um, yeah. well, done. well, we look forward to seeing more of you on the world stage. Annabelle, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Now, we wish you all the best for this year's world. And if you do want to find out more about Annabelle, you can go to her website.